yeah, look, come on, man. This, we're a real church, man. We got an app, all right? This is a real church. We're not playing around. We're not playing anymore. So you can download that. I don't know what all you can do. Order a pizza off of it or what? I don't know. We're going to keep adding to it, but uh, I'm pretty fired up about that. If you haven't had a chance to meet me, who is this guy? My name's Nathan. I'm one of the pastors here. If you're joining us online, thanks so much for crashing the party. Good way to start the year. Uh, we're going to close this series called WYF, Were You Faithful? Last week, we talked about looking back on the past year and determining how, how do you know if you were faithful through that. And so what I want to do today is I really want to set you up for success. We got a new year. We've turned the page it's 2021, and so I want to talk, uh, talk to you this morning about a thing called foundations. I want to ask you a question. What are you specifically building your life on? Every one of us in 2021 is building our life. We're, we're building this year, like you've turned over a new leaf and turned the page on it, and you've got dreams. You've got ideas for the future, things that you're working towards. And so I want to talk to you about what you're building your life on. I know everybody has ideas of what they want to build in different areas that you want to see your life grow, but let's talk about the foundation real quick. One of my favorite games uh, growing up was uh, Jenga. I don't know if we got any Jenga fans in the house. I was pretty dominant in it at the client household, as with most board games. And um, so the idea is there's all these blocks that are in a little tower, and uh, each person, one by one, takes one of the blocks from a layer and takes it off of the, the, the big tower and then you put it on top of the tower. And the way that you win and lose is if, if you take a block out and put it on top of the tower, you're continuing to build it taller and it falls when it's your turn, then, then you've lost. So you're good to take any block out except those blocks at the bottom, right? You don't want to mess with the bottom three or four layers because once the foundation gets wobbly and you try to build up even taller and build up even higher, the whole thing is going to fall down. Foundations are so important. If you're a parent in here, you know that in the formative early years of your kids, you're doing everything you can to establish a positive foundation. Like you watch what they eat and what they do and you're building healthy habits and teaching them how to, how to be polite, yes ma'am, no ma'am, thank you, no thank you, all of these things because when they're small, you are setting the foundation. You're laying the groundwork that's gonna become the adult that they're gonna grow into one day. So, so important. Let me tell you a crazy story uh, about foundations and generosity. Uh, a couple of times this year, this happened, um, we had some families in the church uh, that sold a, a house and they called me up and they said, hey, we, we sold a house and we want to give a portion of the proceeds to Revo. And so two different people said, I'm going to mail you a $10,000 check. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen that many zeros on a check. I hadn't. And so I was like, Okay, yes, yeah, What you, you need the address? Like, I'll, I'll come to your house and pick it up if you want me to. We had another person at the very end of the year that did a stock transfer. $25,000 just gave it to the church. Said, hey, man, we believe in the mission. We want to reach the community. We want to give it to you. I was like, now, 25, when you said 25, you say 25,000? Is that, how I many? okay, thank you. Um, and I met with every one of these people. I said, man, I, I, I need to figure something out because, like, what you just did, uh, that's not normal. I don't know a lot of people that are doing that. And uh, so I want to, like, I need to pick your brain about that. I want to know how that happens because it's a desire in my life to be somebody that's generous. Like that, that's just somebody I want to be. When I grow up, I, I want to be generous like, like these people. And so I would sit down with them and, I, and just ask them all the same question. Like, tell me how you got to the point in your life where you were comfortable with giving that money away. Like, how did that happen? That's not normal. A lot of people aren't doing that. I want to be like that when I grow up. What happened? Every single time I've sat down with a person like that that made a gift, they always tied it back to how they were raised. They said, even growing up, even when my family had nothing, my parents taught me generosity. They taught me that whether you have a little or a lot, be generous with it. Help the church with it, help meet needs, help your friends and family, just like live open-handed to it. And uh, man, that, that's a pattern in everything. You want to talk about the significance of the foundation that you are laying right now in your life for generations to come. 
it had an impact. I remember when my dad used to give my brother and I uh, like an allowance, I guess. He would give it to us on Sunday morning, right? He would, he would give us this money. And I, I never knew why he gave it to us on Sunday morning. He just gave it to us on Sunday morning, uh, right before we went to church. And now I know, like years later, I know that my dad used to give us money on Sunday morning because he wanted to make us, as, as his sons, wrestle with this question. What is the first thing you're going to do when you get paid? And he was trying to teach us the first thing you do when you get paid is to honor God with your money. Like, I'm going to give it to you an hour before we go to church. Now, what's the first thing you're going to do with this newfound money that you got? And like when you're in elementary school, any money, like you get $1 and you think you're filthy rich. Like you can't believe all of the things that you're going to buy with this $1. And so he, he was teaching us that from a very young age. And then to this day, like that, that's what my wife and I do. Like soon as payday hits, not, not if we have it left over, as soon as we get paid, we honor God with that. And that's the foundation that my, my dad helped lay in me and the foundation that I have in my life. Man, foundations are so, so important. And so I want to ask you, as you have big dreams and goals and plans for 2021, what kind of foundation are you building? What kind of foundation are you, are you laying? Because you, you probably know this, before anything else can be built this year, you have to lay a foundation. If you've ever seen a house built, uh, the walls do not get built first. Uh, the windows don't get put in first. You don't raise the roof first. Uh, you lay the foundation. And then you can hang the pictures. Then you can build the walls. Then you can put in the doors and the windows. But without that foundation, you can't build anything of significance. So what are you trying to build this year? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your goals? Maybe you're a goal setter at the beginning of the year. What are those things that you're going to build? And, but, but first of all, like we've got to figure out what are we actually going to build on? The foundation that you are laying right now is so important to what you're going to actually be able to see in your life, in your marriage, in your finances, in your job. Uh, with your career, with your kids as parents, every area of your life that you are trying to build a good life that honors God, the life that he's called you to, all of that success will depend on what foundation you are laying it on. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about foundations. As we talk about answering this question, were you faithful? I think the only way you are ever going to be able to answer at the end of this year, whether or not you were faithful, is if you make some decisions right now. If you make some decisions about your foundation and what you choose to build your life on, is that important? And so Jesus tells this really popular story. Maybe you've heard it before in Matthew chapter seven. If you have your Bible, you can open it up. If you have your app, you can open it up, your your version app. Matthew chapter seven, a really popular story that Jesus tells about the importance of building on a foundation. Let me me read it for you. Matthew seven, starting in verse 24. Here's, Here's a story. Jesus says, therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the storms rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. See, in this story, the house represents these two men's lives. Not a, not a literal house, but you and I, every person in here is building something this coming year. So your life is this house that you're constructing. And then in scripture, oftentimes storms were used as an analogy for an adverse situation that comes your way some of the things that are going to hit your life. And I love the detail in this passage because like, like notice where all the adversity comes from. Jesus said, first of all, the rain comes from above, then the floods come from below, then the winds beat on both sides of the house. Like you, you ever felt like that before? Like my problems are coming from all directions. Like it feels like I'm getting hit from every side. Can you relate to that? Anybody ever been through something maybe recently where it felt like you were getting hit from all sides? Maybe you were going through a struggle, maybe meeting a little bit of adversity in in your life. 
Jesus says it's going to come from all sides, and you know what that looks like. I know what that looks like. You feel like your marriage is under attack, your family, your, your finances, your career, your kids, like relationships, every aspect, your physical health maybe, your, your mental health, your emotional health, all of it feels like it's either getting rained on or the wind is beating it from the side or the floodwaters are rising. And, and we all know, everybody knows what it feels like to be in the midst of a storm. And so I love that Jesus tells these stories. He puts the cookies on the bottom shelf where everybody can reach them and tells stories in ways that people can grasp what he's trying to, to communicate just in a really, really simple form. But here's what scripture says. There were, there were two men and they look pretty similar, right? Two men, they, they were building a house, very similar. They were both men building a life just like you are and just like, just like I am. And both people faced storms. But that is where the similarities end. Because Jesus said there was one difference between these two people. It was the foundation in which they built their life on. See, one person built it on the rock. One person built it on the sand. If you've ever built or know anything about building a house or construction or, or just dealing with, with rock versus sand, you know there's some big differences in that. Sand is a lot cheaper than rock is, a lot cheaper than gravel. Sand is easier to work with. It doesn't take as long to work with sand as it does to work with a solid foundation in a, in a solid rock. So one of the things that Jesus is saying is, here's the difference. Both people are building. Both people have big dreams and desires, but one guy decided he'd take the shortcut. One guy decided he wouldn't put in the work and the time and the effort that it took to build his life on a strong foundation. One guy chose the sand, but the other guy didn't cut any corners. The other one put the work in. The other one decided that this rock that they would build their life on, they were not going to cheat the system. They weren't going to do shortcuts. They weren't going to go the cheap route. They were going to build their life on something that actually mattered. And when you see that, you'll see the difference in these two men. One person was willing to put in the work. Let me ask you this, man. It's 2021. Are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to put in the effort so that you can build your life on a strong foundation? Or are you going to try to take a shortcut and realize later on in life when your life comes crashing down that you shouldn't have built on the sand, but that you should have focused on the rock? If you want to build a good life, I don't know anybody that doesn't want to build a good life. If you want to build a good life, it starts with a strong foundation. Let me go back over these and show you some things out of this passage that I think are really encouraging for us as as we dream about building in 2021. Jesus says this, back in verse 24, therefore everyone, highlight that, underline it, star it, put a little smiley face by it. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Here's the great news. You ready for this? Every one of you can have a life that is built on a good foundation. Jesus says everyone, anyone that does this can have their life built on a good foundation. That means you don't have to be religious. You don't have to be uh, intelligent. You don't have to know a lot. You don't have to have a lot of experience. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to come from the right family or the right background to build your life into something that actually matters, a life of significance and purpose, something that's going to stand the test of time. Jesus says, anyone who does this. So this is an invitation to every one of you in here, everyone that is watching, everyone that's ready to take their next step, to build their life on something of significance. In fact, like you don't even have to know Jesus to begin to build your life. Like you can start a relationship with Jesus right now. And that's the first brick that you're laying to build your life on a strong foundation. So Jesus is like, even if this is the first day you've ever heard of me, welcome to the team. You can start building your life on something that will last. You can build it on a strong foundation. That's my, my first point that I, I hope is gonna be freeing to you, but, but also challenge you a little bit about your foundation. Number one is this, your foundation is about application, not information. Jesus doesn't say a good foundation is based on what you know. Jesus says it's about what you do and how you apply God's word. Listen to what he says. He says, both of the men heard the word from God. That means both men, both people at the beginning of the year were sitting in church. 
Both of them listened to the sermon. Both of them had their notebooks out. They both took the notes. Here's the big difference, Jesus said. One heard and did nothing with it. But the other one heard and then went home and applied it. He heard the words of Jesus and then followed them. That was the only difference between the two. Both men were building. Both men had houses. Both men faced the storm. Both men heard the word from God. One of them heard it and applied it. The other one heard it and forgot about it. And when the storms came and the winds raged, one house fell down and one house stood firm. You want to know what it was? It was the foundation. But Jesus said, your foundation is not about how much you know, but actually about what you're able to apply. The wise man heard the words and then put them into practice. That was the only difference. One of them put them into practice and the other one didn't. They both might have come to church. They both might have joined a small group. They both might have prayed. They both might have attended every single Sunday of the year, but one of them went home and applied it and the other one didn't. Parents, you can relate to me on this, um, but have you ever uh, sat down and, like looked your kid in the face, stared at him in the face and told them something very clear that they needed to understand. And, and it was so important that when you told them, you stopped and you asked them again specifically, did you hear me? Do, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I recently did this with one of my daughters uh, to remain anonymous. I'll just tell you, I will not mention her name, my youngest daughter, uh, Lydia. Um, we were in the grocery store and uh, I don't know if you or your kids have ever dropped a glass spaghetti jar in the grocery store. We've done that. I've done that. Lydia's done that uh, frequently. Here's what I told her. We're going through the grocery store and I said, now Lydia, uh, please don't touch any of the glass jars. In fact, you know what? Don't touch anything, right? Just, just keep your hand on the cart or in your pockets, don't touch anything. And then I looked at her, I said, now Lydia, did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? Did you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth when I said, don't touch anything? And she looked at me with those sweet brown eyes and says, yes, sir, I won't touch anything. I turn around, five seconds later, I hear a shatter. And we got a spaghetti jar on the ground on aisle five. And I did what any parent would do. I grabbed Lydia and we ran, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got my cart before. I didn't leave it there. Um, so clean up on Alpha. We got a busted spaghetti jar on it. And like, it, it feels like that's what Jesus is saying here. He's like, they heard the words. Both men heard it. It's like, they didn't ignore it. Like, they, it's not like that one guy heard it and one guy didn't. Like, no, both people heard it. And Jesus is like, do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? And both men are like, yes. One person goes home and applies it, keeps their hands in their pockets, don't touch the spaghetti jar. The other person has a shattered glass at their feet wondering what happened. And Jesus is like, I told you. Did you not hear me? Did you not listen to me? It's about application, not just about information. It's not just about hearing it, but it's your ability to take what you've heard and then to go and apply it to your life. If you want to build a good house, if you want to build a good life in 2021, it starts with the foundation. And your foundation is about your ability to apply what God's word says, not just to hear it, not just to show up, not just to attend. And sometimes, just like my kids and your kids, we can do the exact opposite of what we hear. And that's how we understand we're not going to be able to build much on that foundation. He continues in, in verse 25. He says, now, now the rain came down. We're talking about the righteous person, okay? The one that, that listened to God and, and did what he said. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Here's the second thing. Like, understand this about your foundation. This is why it's so significant. Uh, your foundation provides stability, your foundation provides stability in your life. Stability in life is something that seems like many people have been chasing recently, but very few people have actually found. Stability in life. Remember how many times we said uh, over the past 12 months, man, I, I just want life to get back to normal, right? I, I just want to know what we're doing in the next season. Like, I just want to know. I, I don't want to live day by day with news conferences and like, when are we going back to school? Are we going back to school? Am I going to be a homeschool dad forever? Like, what is, I just want things to be stable and, and normal, but yet stability seemed to be extremely elusive in the last season. And most people attribute stability uh, to the 
situation that's happening around them. If we have storms, if we have rain, if we have wind, that makes me unstable. Jesus actually said the opposite. Jesus said your stability is linked to what you have chosen to build your life on. Did you know that it doesn't matter what happens around you, that you can still be stable? It doesn't matter how bad it rains or how much it floods or how many winds blow against your life, that if you build your life on the right foundation, then you can have stability even when it rains, even when it storms. Now, a lot of Christians don't get this. Like, let, me, let me clarify this because a lot of, a lot of people that I meet kind of have believed what the opposite of what Jesus said. I don't know if you've ever heard a, a church person or a religious person tell you this, um, that here's what the Bible says. Uh, Jesus said, if you believe in him and you follow him and you do all the right things, then guess what? It'll never rain in your life. Good things always happen to good people, right? Bad things happen to bad people. It doesn't, doesn't the Bible teach that? Didn't Jesus say that if you'll just listen to me and follow me, then you won't have bad days and you'll be above all of that stuff and your life will be great and perfect and just you'll be rewarded for all of that. And did you know that that is not what Jesus said? <laughs> did you know you can't find that in the Bible? Because right here the phrase says, even though, though the rains came, The man that heard what Jesus said and applied it, did it in his life, still had storms. You mean to tell me bad things still happen to you if you decide to follow Jesus? That your life can still have hardship in it? That you can still be frustrated? That you can still get hit from all directions of all sides of life? Yeah, that's what the the scripture says. But that's why Jesus made it very clear that your stability comes not from the sunny days, but your stability comes from the foundation in which you're building. See, God never promised you a life without storms. God promises you stability in the storms. So I don't know what 2021 is going to hold. Nobody in here knows what it is. I don't know if we're going to have the same storms as we have last year or different storms, but the reality is we're still going to have storms. We're not going to be able to avoid that. So the question to ask yourself now is, what is your life built on? What is the foundation? Because your foundation, not the lack of storms, your foundation is going to provide the stability in your life that everybody desires, that everybody wants. Amazing that Jesus never said, if you do the right things, I'll protect you from hardships. I'll protect you from the storm. He says, man, I'll do you one better. You'll be the person that's standing tall in the storm. You'll be the person that isn't affected by the storm. You'll be the person whose house remains strong no matter how hard the winds blow. That seems like a really good promise coming from Jesus. Jesus says, you'll only get that if you build your life on a good foundation. Your foundation leads to stability in your life. Here's the other guy, though. There's always another side of the corn. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Same storm came, got it? The rains came down, the storm rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Same man, looks the same from the outside. Both of them were building a house. Both of them faced the exact same storm. It wasn't a different storm, hit from every direction. One man's house fell, one man's life fell apart. The other one remained strong. What's interesting in this story is it was not apparent who had the right foundation, whose life was built on the right thing until the storm came. Before the storm, both men looked the same. Before the storm, both of their houses looked the same. Their lives in the storm looked the exact same way. But we couldn't tell whose life was built on the right thing until the storm comes. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, But if you're coming out of a storm, what if that was a blessing that God allowed you to see some cracks in your foundation? What if you can look back on the rain and the floods and the wind that has hit you from every direction? What if you look back on that and realize that maybe that was the most kind thing that God could ever do? He can expose some of the weaknesses in your life, some of the cracks in your foundation. And here we are, the first Sunday of 2021, and God says, now, here's your chance to repair the foundation. 
before the next storm comes. Man, the last year showed you some things, taught you some things, made you stronger. You're, you're better on the other side for it. But today is about saying, where are the cracks in the foundation? Where are the holes that I need to fill? I don't want to do that all over again. Man, what a gracious opportunity that God's given us in this upcoming year to examine the places that we need to repair, to work on that and have a clean slate this year and saying, you know what, I got big plans for this year. I got big dreams, big goals that I wanna accomplish, but I'm gonna start with making sure the foundation is right. The foundation is laid first. Nothing will reveal your foundation, what your life is built on more than a storm. And so what do you see? If you just take a look at your life right now, you, we're at the back end of a storm where some things have been exposed. What do we need to do? What do we need to fix? What do we need to repair? What did you learn about your foundation? Here's why that's important. The last thing is number three, your foundation determines your future. You want to know why it's really important and significant to talk about and lean into building your foundation right now in life? Because whatever you're doing now is going to determine what you're going to be able to build in 2021 that determines the heights that you go to, the quality that you have in the family, in in your life that God has called you to build, called you to work on, called you to fulfill. That foundation, none of that happens. None of that future is possible without building on that foundation. No matter where you build and no matter what you build, understand storms are gonna come. It's not like storms skip over good people and only hit bad people. Storms this upcoming year are gonna come and what's gonna really matter is what are you building your life on? What foundation are you laying right now? So there's a big question, what what is a foundation? What should I be building my life on? Well, Jesus says this, whoever hears these words of mine and applies them is the one that builds their rock, their, their house on the rock, who builds their life on something that won't shift and won't give away. So many truths in this word. And God says, if you'll hear this and you will apply this, then you'll set yourself up for success in life. I know we focus a lot on application, but but I don't want to miss the importance of what Jesus says. Man, like, you need to hear this. You got to spend time reading this. Uh, Every day, spend time in the word. Figure out what God says. Because if you don't know what God said, then you definitely can't apply it to your life. I've told you guys this before, but I had a a professor in college. I was taking Old Testament as a class, Dr. Haney. Uh, And at least once a week, we would have a pop quiz. I don't even know why I call it a pop quiz, because I knew it was coming. But for some reason, I never studied for it. But it was a pop quiz. Dr. Haney would walk in here. He'd walk into the class. The whole class is seated. And he'd say, all right, listen up, sinners. Everybody get out a piece of paper. We're getting ready to have a quiz. And that's when the praying started. But this professor, he would actually pray at the beginning of every class. And he would say, before we take this class, I want to, I mean, before we take this quiz, I want to say a quick prayer for all the students in the room. And uh, he always said what, what I called and what he referred to as a miracle prayer, okay? It had two parts. The first thing he would do is this. He would, he would say, all right, bow your heads with me, students. Uh, God, I pray for these students right now. I pray that you would help them recall what they studied for this test. Now, I don't believe in that prayer. I was, I was casting that out. Like, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Here's the problem. I didn't study. And so last thing I want to do is ask God to help me remember everything that I studied, because even if he did that, I'd fail because I didn't study. And so Dr. Haney was always gracious and always kind at the end. And he would say that prayer. But then at the end, before he said amen, he said, and God, for those students that didn't study. And at that point, like, I'm not a Pentecostal charismatic guy, but at that point I was, right? He'd say, for those students that didn't study. And I'd be like, "Mm -hmm, God, yes, yes, Lord, I want it, whatever you have. He's like, for those students that did not study, God, I pray for a miracle. And at this point, like I'm standing up, like I'm, my hands are raised, I'm, I'm swaying back and forth. I'm like, God, please, yeah, bring a miracle down on this piece of paper right here. For those of us that did not study, we need a miracle uh, for that. And God never chose to bless me with a miracle um, with that test. But it's, it's interesting because you can't apply it if you don't know it, if you haven't heard it. So we can't move to this point where we're just like, all right, so when the storms come, I'm going to apply what I know. If you never read it, then you can't apply it. 
We're going to be asking God to recall things to our memory that we've never even studied, and that's not going to remember anything. And so Jesus says, for those that hear it and then apply it, that's the foundation. Hear my word and apply my word to their life. That is the foundation. You know, it's interesting, uh, Jesus actually, to begin his ministry, remember when Jesus was tempted in the desert by Satan? Remember what Jesus did every time he was tempted, every storm that came his way, Jesus quoted scripture back to Satan. And when he had done that three different times, uh, it says Satan left him. Now, let me tell you something. If Jesus had to have a foundation of the word of God in order to navigate storms and temptations in his life, what makes you think you don't need it? He made it a priority to know the word so that when the storms came and the rains and the winds, he replied it, recalled it, applied that word in his life. And that's what gave him his whole foundation for his, his ministry. I gotta tell you guys a story about five years ago. Um, we had an ice storm in Winston and our power went out. And uh, I have a, a chest freezer downstairs in our, in our garage and I started getting worried uh, because there was a bunch of food in that chest freezer. I'm like, what happened? I mean, with all this food's gonna melt. What's, what, what are we gonna do? And Elizabeth's like, yeah, we got like ground beef down there. We got a bunch of chicken down there. I was like, forget that. We got ice cream sandwiches. We got popsicles. What are we gonna do? We gotta eat it all. I was worried about that stuff. I was just like, all right, we're gonna do it. We're gonna take it as a team. We're not gonna waste these. We're not gonna lose these. Um, like, let, let's just figure it out. And so I made up my mind at that point. I was like, I, like, I, I was unprepared, okay? I am never going to let that happen again. I, I am not going to lose $40 worth of ice cream sandwiches because I wasn't ready. Um, so after that snowstorm and everything calmed down, I went to the store and I bought a generator. And I'm not talking about a generator that you can plug your phone into. I'm talking about I bought a generator that'll power my whole house. All you got to do is plug it into the little box, whatever that's called. If I ever have to use it, my house is going to catch on fire. You can tell. Whatever the box you got to plug it into, that's what you plug it into. You can run the whole house. I'm not talking about just one room. It'll run the hot water heater. It'll run the air conditioner. It'll run every, it'll run my blender. I want it all. I told the guy, I was like, I want it all. When the power goes out, I want it all. And so I bought that generator. So fired up about it. For five years, I was praying that the power would go out. Could not wait to use it. We had snowstorms, power never went out. We had lightning, power never went out. For five years, I'm begging the power to go out. Well, this past year, down the road from my house, there was like a, a Coca-Cola delivery truck that turned the corner too sharp and they hit the power line pole and they knocked the whole pole out. I'm sitting in my den watching TV. The power goes out. I'm like, it's game time, right? <laughs> it's, it's game time. I run downstairs because I got to get this thing hooked up before the power comes back on, right? So I'm running downstairs and I plug the generator in and I turn it on. That thing is humming like a well oiled machine. By this point, it's dark. Like it has, the, the, the darkness has, it, like my neighborhood's pitch black dark. Now, I don't know if this is a flex or like I'm just trying to be the alpha male in my neighborhood, but here's what I did. I went through my house and I turned every single light in the house on. Every single light. I turned the, the, the air conditioner way down low, like way down low. Every, I turned the floodlights on. I turned the porch lights on. I turned the blender on, made me a little Oreo milkshake. Like it's on, it's on. And then here's what I did. I'm standing out there with the Oreo milkshake in my hand, every light in the house on. And I'm standing on my front porch. And occasionally, cars will drive by. Now, we don't have any light in my neighborhood. No street lights. Now, it is pitch black dark except for this one house. And for some reason, this guy has every light in the house on. And he's outside waving to people that drive by with an Oreo milkshake in his hand. What is wrong with this dude? And here's what would happen. My neighbors would drive by. And when they passed, they'd go by real slow. Because they wanted to know, well, how does that guy have lights? And they rolled down the window and be like, what's going on? Is the power back on? I was like, no, nah, I got a generator, bro. I'm in here making milkshakes. It's cold in here. And I got the air turned down. And I don't know if you can see me. I got all the lights on in the house that I can, that I can have them on. I made my mind up earlier that I would never be caught in that position again, where if we ever faced a storm that I would be ready. And I think that's the opportunity that you and I have right now, that you can make a decision right now to lay the foundation that is built on Jesus and his word. 
And if you make that decision now, I'm not telling you that storms won't come. I'm not telling you that your power won't go out. I'm telling you that if you lay the right foundation now, you'll be like me. You'll say, storms, come on. <laughs> like, I'm ready. I don't care if storms come. I don't care if I lose power. I don't, I don't care if the power pole falls down. I'm going to be good. I, I, my house is going to be bright. <laughs> I'm going to be drinking Oreo milkshakes. It's going to be, I'm going to be standing on my front porch waving at everybody as they go by. And I think if you do that, you lay the correct foundation now, that's exactly what's going to happen. Later on in life, when the storms hit and other people's lives begin to fall apart, they'll walk by your house and they'll scratch their head and say, why aren't you panicking? Why aren't you sitting in the darkness? Why aren't you mad? Why aren't you frustrated? Why isn't your life turned upside down? And you're going to be able to stand outside of your life and say, because earlier this year, I made the decision to build my life on a foundation that would not be shaken. That even when the storms came, it would not blow me down. And that'll be a great opportunity for you to tell someone that your life is built on Jesus. And then when everyone else is in the darkness, you are standing in the light. When everyone else is hopeless, you have the hope that they desire. You can be the city on a hill, the beacon in the darkness, the salt of the earth. If you'll make a decision right now to build the rest of your life on a firm foundation, then you won't care what storms come. They will not shake you. They will not tear you down because with your foundation comes stability. With your foundation of not just information, but application in your life, you can build something that matters. You can build something that stays And at the end of this year and at the end of your life, if somebody asks you, were you faithful? Then you can say, yes, because I chose to build my life on Jesus. I chose to build my life on his word, on something that would not fail no matter what came. I hope you'll embrace that challenge and start building and repairing the foundation today. And build your life on something that will always be there and keep you stable. Let me pray for you. God, thanks for the promise. Not that bad things won't happen. God, they're unavoidable. Uh, There's nothing that that we can do to prevent those things, the storms from coming. That's not what your word says. Your word says that if if we would just trust in you, if we would build our life on a foundation, that it wouldn't matter what comes in life, that we wouldn't be shaken, that we wouldn't be knocked down, that we could stand firm if we chose to build our lives and our finances and our marriage and our relationships and our career and everything about our lives, if we would choose to build it on you, for your word to be the foundation, not just hearing it, but applying it. God, you promised that that would mean we were building whatever, we, whatever our life would be on a firm foundation. So God, here we are, not, not just hearing, but with a desire to apply these words in our life so that we can be like the one that builds a strong life a life of significance, a life of purpose, a life that matters. And God, give us an opportunity one time this year to help others realize the significance and the importance of building a life on you, that we can be that light in the darkness, the people that offer hope in a hopeless time. God, we pray that you use us in a powerful way like that this year. Pray those things in your son Jesus' name. And you want to know why faithfulness matters so much to us? Why, why we want to be faithful? Because we worship a God that is faithful. He's always been faithful. Faithful to you and faithful to me. He's offered so many promises through his word. And that's why I love this song right here. Would you stand and sing with me as we sing about the faithfulness of God?